Hello everyone, this is Bradley. Today we are going to talk about this knitting shoe animation type B. As you can see from the results, it's very different from the type A animation we've discussed earlier because they're using two completely different techniques. Be aware that uh, this technique has been discussed in Cinema 4D using X particle nine years ago and uh, nothing has ever changed. Even today, this kind of animation or technique uh, is being used in many creative uh, advertisements with a great result. Okay, and uh, we're just going to apply it in Blender using geometry nodes. Also to know that uh, many of my knitting animation I've posted recently are essentially using this technique. The technique is as simple as instancing, but uh, to add some more details, it may take a lot more nodes. Uh, I'm not going to cover every detail about this animation in this tutorial. We're going to make probably two to three tutorials about this principle. So we try to add more details from tutorial to tutorial so that it's on one side that reinforce your memory about this technique and on the other side we can cover uh, all this kind of detail in greater depth, hopefully. So let's just start. So here we're in Blender and this is basically the same startup as we had the last time for type A animation. I have uh, the main part of shoe and the base part. Uh, we can hide the base part because it's irrelevant. And uh, talking about the principle, uh, last time we are essentially making an animation on a plane. Okay. And then we are sampled the UV surface to wrap that uh, onto a geometry in 3D space. Uh, because of the importance of UV, I have to remodel the original mesh I got from internet to make it look like this and I have to uh, making all this kind of scene to unwrap a UV. This time, however, we are using a completely different strategy. We're essentially instancing on these polygons. So the requirement of UV is not important. Of course, it would be better if you have a good UV so that you can put some texture onto that. But it also depends on what kind of show you are really making and uh, many other things. Okay. Um, and uh, just to remind you again how to model this main part of shoe, we started with a plane and maybe we add uh, several cuts and then we potentially extrude that into the Z space and the delete one polygons. So finally it looks something like this and you just uh, um, essentially deal with whatever vertices to make it more like a kind of shoe is the idea. Okay. So once we have this model, uh, we also need another thing to instance with. That's the knitting unit. I already made a knitting unit as you would see. So this is the knitting unit. I just want to briefly talk about how to model this because this is so important. So we start with a single vertex. If you do not uh, know how to get this single vertex option, you start with a plane and you go to edit mode and delete all the small points uh, which are irrelevant and you can selection to cursor to make these only points to the world origin. Okay, And then you can go to the top view and hold the control shift and right click so you are making an extrusion and then you just click 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 you get a kind of a shape and basically that's that uh, you can definitely make them symmetrical with this uh, mirror modifier with bisect and then you can tweak uh, the rest about it so this is basically how I did that. We, I started with a mesh. The end goal is we need to convert this mesh into a curve, a nervous curve. Because uh, if we have this thing, this tiny amount of vertices, this nervous curve can be really smoothed out. All this kind of curvature. Okay. Right now we have this kind of uh, ugly geometry and you can add a subdivision surface to see how it can be smoothed out uh, with all this kind of algorithm. And basically we're going to do that the same for 
the knitting units we just uh, made. So here basically I'm going to use the knitting unit I made at the most beginning. I'm not using the subdivision surface. It was just a kind of an example to show how the end product may look like. Okay, but I'm not going to use that. I'm just directly going to convert that it into curve. And you see this curve is very, uh, this curve is very jaggy, all these kind of sharp points because it's a kind of poly curve um, being converted by default. I'm just going to uh, set the spline type into nerves so everything will be smoothed out with this uh, tiny amount of vertices. So the reason I'm doing all this kind of process is I want to ensure that I'm using the least amount of vertices to get the best uh, or the most smooth result uh, from this kind of modeling. Okay. So once I have this unit, we're just going to instance that onto the mesh. Since we're going to instance a lot of this unit, uh, to save the performance, instead of using the regular geometry node tree, we are going to use the new curve system, which is MP here. Okay, uh, and uh, I've talked about this in the uh, fluffy carpet tutorial. That you need a mesh to add this MP here, so that this new curve, as you can see, they have different symbols, will be a child of this mesh but uh, obviously we are not going to use that the we are going to just uh, disable this relationship another thing it automatically adds a surface deform uh, modifier with all these kind of weird settings we do not worry about that uh, just uh, by principle it's used for sculpting to add the hairs on a geometry but in this case we I'm not going to worry about it. We just go to the node tree and instead of a surface deform, let's just name that as an instancing. Okay. Just to be clear about what we are actually doing, and I'm going to delete this group input and the, uh, the node. And I'm going to import this shoe main, which is giving the shoe geometry within the node tree. Uh, I'm also going to disable the sub subdivision surface modifier on the original geometry because I want to control the subdivision surface level within geometry nodes. Okay. And I also need to bring the knitting unit to the node tree so that we can use that to the instance. So this is the curve or knitting unit we actually bring into the uh, new curves or hair. It looks kind of very sharp. It's not uh, as smooth as we see for the actual nervous curve. Uh, there are many different reasons. Uh, in order to save the performance, um, the additional subdivision surface level is kept uh, zero. And we just increase that to three, so it becomes a little bit smooth. But uh, it looks kind of ugly, so we need to resample it. Resample curve. So maybe 15 is good enough. So we recover the actual geometry within this node tree in this new curve system. The benefit of it is that uh, usually you need to bevel the curve to add a thickness so that it can be shown in the render. But in this case, you can directly just use the EV. It will be rendered. And that's why we're using this new curve. Okay. Next, we just need to instance it. As always, we are going to use the preset, which you can download for free from the link in the description. Since we want to instance on this kind of polygons, we are using face points which we essentially is uh, mesh to points on the face domain to give uh, a point per face. Uh, there are many other settings or outputs about rotation I've discussed the last time, uh, which is essentially corner of face, face of corner, edge of corner, uh, to construct a local tangent, which is not directly provided by 
geometry nodes. Okay, so we have all these kind of points. So let's just take a points instance. So now we have our geometry B instance. It looks kind of very ugly. Let's just decrease the subdivision level for the moment. And for better visualization, we can add a bevel curve to give all this kind of curve thickness. But knowing that in the actual render, um, the reason we're using this curve is because we can render this curve directly uh, within uh, the engine. Uh, in order to do that, you can you have to uh, realize instance. I, I don't know why, but uh, it's a must. And uh, it actually improves the performance instead of hurting it compared to the bevel curve. Because curve to mesh is very expensive to generate all these kind of polygons. And if you want to give a lot of thickness, instead of using strand, you can use a strip. And now it's kind of too thick. Let's just add a set curve radius so you can control the scale of it. So this is just kind of an idea. Okay. In your actual render, you need to use this method. Um, but for now, I'm going to just the bevel curve. Okay. So this is what we're having now. And uh, all these kind of units are not following the polygon orientation. So we have to use this rotation. Last time I talked about three modes, which is X, Y, Z. Uh, X is zero, Y is one, and Z is two. Okay, but uh, now we are on negative one, which is N mode. I don't want to discuss too much about this N mode. Um, it's a completely different story. What do you need to know is, is that it's not giving a good result now because it's not facing straight. So there is some weird orientation. So where you can just choose X, Y, Z, it does not really matter, whichever one which you like. But for accuracy, you want to weigh the edges as well as whatever stuff. Okay. There are many reasons uh, about all this kind of setting, but uh, basically just do that. And then now you can see all these kind of knitting units are kind of touching each other. Which is very nice because this is actually the trick of this method. Another thing, however, is that uh, now you can see that if you look at the original mesh, some of polygons is small, some of polygon is big. So you want to scale this kind of instance accordingly to, uh, for their polygon size. So I've discussed the last time about the face area, you have to do the square root and the capturing and the whatever. And that's why we have this scale. So we put this scale. So now, uh, this is how it look like. We add a factor. So let's add a mass in order to multiply this scale. Maybe increase that to two times. So now we have it. Okay. The benefit of uh, this uh, face area method is that uh, if you increase the subdivision surface it will scale everything down accordingly with its face area so it's completely procedural instead of being a large whatever I have no idea okay and definitely you need to decrease the radius and so on and so forth and this set curve radius at the end but this is basically an idea. We get a very nice uh, knitted shoe, but this is not an animation yet. Talking about the animation, it's essentially very simple. You are just the controlling all these kind of parameters. For example, if I multiply zero, everything disappears. But if I increase the value, they just scale them up. So this is the idea. So. The way we do that is basically just to use a fold. Uh, I've talked about the proximity fold, and I usually prefer to use that. But there are also other fold that you can use directional fold, uh, radial fold, whichever one you prefer. Okay. So proximity fold, you can start with an empty object. 
it will be better to be an empty sphere so that you can actually visualize the thing better. So the idea of proximity fourth is at the center, which is the closest point you get one, and farther away you get zero. And here you output zero to one. So this is the idea. So now we plug this fourth to the shoe and select this empty object. You do not really see anything happening, but if you scale this up and down, then you realize this is the animation. And I also talked about this fourth animation settings. You just make that to zero to one, you make the animation appear and disappear. Okay, so this is the idea. Uh, very simple and straightforward. And because I'm going to use this fourth uh, value in many different places, so instead of changing this minimum and the maximum, I'm just going to use remap zero to one which is essentially just a map range. But uh, we know that the minimum and the maximum is 0 to 1. Okay. And here I'm going to scale that up to 2. Another thing we are going to change is the rotation. So let's rotate ruler. We are rotating on the local axis. It may not be very obvious about what's going on. So let's decrease the subdivision surface now. You can actually see that by rotating 90 degrees, they flip upwards. And when they go to zero, they go down. So this is the idea of this animation. We can just uh, combine ruler rotation. And uh, this is why I have to use this remap 0 to 1, because this time it becomes 90 to 0. And plug into the degree and rotate. So now if we play this animation, so it scale up and it rotates. So this is the idea. Okay. We can definitely uh, make a color ramp to make the scaling sharper. So now if we play this animation, so this is how it looks. Okay. It looks kind of very ugly when they are very big, but then you increase the amount of the subdivision, then it becomes an animation. So now this is very kind of boring because everything is um, a little bit regular. So what you can do is you can add a vector noise. So now there are some irregularities of this fold. And you can increase the frequency. Okay. It also reminds me that you can use a noise but we are going to discuss that in other tutorial for a different animation. Okay. Next, we need to move on to another set of instancing. As you can see from the most beginning animation, we actually have something occurring at the ring of this animation as well. So basically, idea is we need to separate the geometry of our geometry at the ring. So we need to use the same fold. Here we can pull another color ramp so that we are synchronized all the settings in two instancing. And uh, here the idea is one is yes, zero is no. So we make a constant to make a clear cut of this setup. So now we can actually see no, no and yes. Okay and uh, everything is synchronized with this animation, but I want to make this everything only occur at the ring. So we add a third socket, so that only some part is being selected. Okay, and uh, we're selecting points, but I'm going to select the face. The reason I'm doing this, is because I want to distribute the points on face. But instead of using the node, which is using density. Density is pretty arbitrary. I want to use the preset, which is on the distribute, so that I really know the amount of points I distribute. Okay. And I can set the amount to be maybe 1500. So I have about 1500 here. And I need the point instance. What I instance is a curved circle. 
You can instance many other things too. But I just instance coin circle and set the position to offset that to 1. And uh, plug that into instance, we get this result. I'm going to take a realizing instance so that it can be rendered in here. I need to turn down the scale, so let's take a value position. So right now this is 0 0.1, let's make it 0 0.01, which I think is kind of okay, let's just make that to be 5. And we also need to deal with the rotation, we can plug the rotation to rotation, and to change the rotation we again use the rotate ruler, maybe rotate 90 degree, mm, something like this. I guess this is good enough. Okay, so this is just kind of idea. Uh, you can tweak all the sound settings later. So now, if we combine these two setup together using this join geometry, we can see that this kind of instancing only occurred at the rim, and everything is procedural with the initial fall of animation. Of course, this is just an example, and. Uh, Uh, you can tweak more things later and polish it, but this is basically the idea. At the last, I want to discuss about uh, how to texture it. At the beginning of this tutorial, I mentioned the UV of this method is not important because we are not using UV anywhere so far. But uh, it will always be better if you have a UV of your geometry. So that's why we can put uh, some image texture on the top of what we are instancing. So here let's take a store named attribute. And we store vector, it can be a face corner. Uh, since generally UV is face corner, but it does not really matter. You can um, put that on the point. And uh, let's just name as a UV. You can also name as a UV map, but it does not really matter. I just want to name that as a UV. And then we take the named attribute. Let's take the UV map. The reason I'm doing this is because I want to pass the UV map attribute to all these kind of face points so that face points can pass this attribute into this instance or hairs. So now if I take a set material and let's add a material, let's just name it as a tutorial. So within this material panel, let's take this tutorial and then we go to shader editor. By default, if we are using a checker texture and we go to material preview, you can see it's kind of flat because it's using generated coordinate, texture coordinate. It's using generated coordinate. But then we want to use the UV. But if we plug the UV, you can see there's nothing because there's no UV. Uh, instead, we need to use attribute and take the UV we just created. So now, uh, everything is wrapped into UV. You can actually see the scene because this is the same of my original mesh. You can replace this checker texture with any kind of uh, image texture or other whatever stuff, for example, magic texture. That's also an option. Uh, you know what looks crazy, but anyway. So this is just kind of an idea. So, and uh, basically that's it. Knowing that this is not the actual node tree I created the my animation, but I try to simplify it so that you can easily follow this tutorial. And uh, as I said at the beginning, we will use the same technique to make uh, other variations of animation in the future. So. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'll probably see you next time. Bye-bye.